conceptual example number three, an honest question. All right, so you drive four miles at 30 miles an hour and then another four miles at 50 miles an hour. Is your average speed for an entire eight mile trip greater than 40 miles an hour, equal to 40 miles an hour, or less than 40 miles an hour? So this is fairly difficult to think about. So I know almost everyone's natural instinct is, all right, if you're going 30 miles an hour for four miles and then 50 miles an hour for four miles, then it should be equal to 40 miles an hour. But that is not correct. If, for example, the problem said, oh, you're going 30 miles an hour for one hour, and then you're going 50 miles an hour for one hour, what is your average velocity? Then it would be equal to 40 miles an hour. But these cars are not going different miles per hour for the same amount of time. They're going 30 miles an hour for a different amount of time that they're going 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. So we want to think about how long is this car going 30 miles an hour? And then how long is this car going for 50 miles an hour? We know that it's, they're both going for four miles, but what's the time? So what we're going to discover is since they're not going for the same amount of time, what we're going to see if this car is going 30 miles for four miles and 50 miles an hour for four miles, he's going to be taking a longer amount of time going 30 miles an hour and a shorter amount of time going 50 miles an hour because going 50 miles an hour for four miles, you're just gonna get there quicker. Going 30 miles an hour for four hours, it's just gonna take longer. So since the car is going longer for 30 miles an hour than 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, the average mile per hour is going to be 40 miles per hour. And you can try this mathematically. You can find what the time actually is, do the total distance divided by the total time and find what the actual average mile per hour is. All right, back to Jim and Harry. All right, so Jim and Harry are having a race to get to Cindy's house. Cindy's house is 600 meters away. Jim runs as hard as he can, good job Jim, with a speed of 5.3 meters per second. And Harry jogs, oh God, with a speed of 8.2 meters per second. How long will Harry have to wait for Jim when he gets to Cindy's house? Okay, so uh, we're gonna, this has two different scenarios. So we're gonna look at, we're gonna do Harry, I mean Jim in blue. Oopsies. So Jim is gonna be going a distance of 600 meters and he's going with the speed of 5.3 meters per second. And then, We'll put Harry in red. Harry is also going 600 meters, but he's going with a speed of 8.2 meters per second. So obviously, Harry is gonna get there before Jim. But what we wanna do is we wanna see how long does it take Jim to get to Cindy's house? And then, how long does it take Harry to get to Cindy's house? Once we know how long it takes for each of them, then we know, then we can find out how long Harry's gonna be waiting. So now we have our knowns and unknowns. We're gonna be putting into our formula. Speed is equal to distance over time. We know the speed is 5.3 meters per second. The distance is 600 meters. And now we can figure out what the time is going to be equal to. So how long it takes Jim to be able to go is going to be equal to uh, 70, nope, sorry, 113.2 seconds. So 113.2 seconds is how long it takes Jim to get to Cindy's house. However, for Harry, we're gonna do the same thing. Speed is equal to distance over time. Speed is 8.2 meters per second. And it's gonna be equal to the distance 600 meters divided by the time. And time is going to be equal to, bum, 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 
So the time it's going to be taking is, sorry, 73.17 seconds. And then, so we know it took Jim 113.2 seconds and it took Harry 73.17 seconds. So we could just subtract this to see how long Harry's going to be waiting. 113.2 minus 73.17 seconds and we get 40.04 seconds so Harry is going to be waiting for Jim for 40.04 seconds but what happens when Harry gets there first when Jim finally arrives at Cindy's house he notices Harry and Cindy happily drinking lemonade together Cindy never offers Jim any lemonade. Oh God, this isn't looking good. Okay, next example. Cindy, Harry, Kiki, and Jim are participating in a four by 100 relay race. Cindy burns everyone and runs the first 100 meters in with a speed of 8.7 meters per second. Harry gets the baton and runs his 100 meters in 12.8 seconds and Kiki runs her 100 meters with a speed of 7.2 meters per second. Jim almost fumbles the baton but, uh, but it is able to hold on to it. With only one person in front of him, Jim runs as fast as he can and finishes the last 100 meters in 12.4 seconds. Who is the slowest on the team? All right, so there's a few ways that we can figure out who the slowest on the team is. But since they're all running 100 meters, what I'm gonna do is just find out how long it took each of them to run that 100 meters. So let's first look at Cindy. So Cindy runs with a speed of 8.7 meters per second and goes a distance of 100 meters. And we want to find how long this takes. So we're going to do speed equals distance over time. So 8.7 meters per second is equal to the distance 100 meters divided by the time which is unknown. Do a little bit of algebra and we get that time for Cindy is going to be equal to 11.49 seconds. Now, let's look at Harry. So Harry gets the baton next. And it actually already says Harry gets the baton and runs his 100 meters in 12.8 seconds. So we know the time for Harry is equal to 12.8 seconds. Let's look at Kiki now. Kiki uh, runs her 100 meters with a speed of 7.2 meters per second. So speed is equal to 7.2 meters per second. Distance is 100 meters. So now we're looking for time. Again, we're doing speed is equal to distance over time. So 7.2 meters per second is equal to the distance 100 meters divided by the time. And what we get is the time of Kiki is going to be equal to 13.89 seconds and now let's see Jim so actually for Jim it's already given to us Jim almost fumbles the time but is able to hold on to it with only one person in front of him Jim runs as fast as he can and finishes the 100 meter race in 12.4 seconds so actually Jim was pretty fast he's been training a lot I guess so 12.4 seconds now, when we look at this, we can see who the slowest person was. They all ran 100 meters, and it took Kiki 13.89 seconds. So who ran the slowest on the team? Kiki ran the slowest. Okay. But part B is, what was the average speed for the entire team? So average speed is going to be equal to the total distance divided by the total 
time. So this is going to be the total distance is 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. So it's going to be equal to 400 meters divided by the total time. So that's going to be 11.49 plus 12.8 plus 13.89 whoops plus 12.4 let me just add seconds clarify and when we put this into our calculator we can see that the average speed is 7.91 meters per second for the entire team but what happened did Jim win Jim beats the person in front of him and the whole team congratulates him Cindy decides that Jim should be the person to keep the trophy. Mmm, things are looking up for Jim. Alright, next question. Last question for speed and velocity. Honors problem. So after the race, Jim starts to ride his bicycle back to his house, which is one mile away. One mile away. After he travels 0.5 miles, he gets a flat tire. Oh no and starts to walk his bicycle home with a speed of 2.1 meters per second. If it takes Jim a total of 8 minutes to get home, how fast was Jim riding his bicycle in meters per second before he got his flat? Okay, so again, with situations like this with lots of things going on, what we want to do is we want to draw everything out and label things as much as possible. So first of all, to get to Jim's house, from when he started, it is one mile away. One mile. I'm gonna change this to just be sixteen oh nine meters. Then, what we know is another thing that we know is after he travels 0.5 miles, he gets a flat tire, and he starts to walk his bicycle home with a speed of 2.1 meters per second. So he gets a flat tire, and for 0 0.5 miles, or half of that, which is equal to 804.5 uh, meters, he is walking it back. But we also know his speed when he's walking it back, so we know the distance. Uh, and now we know the speed, which is equal to 2.1 meters per second. We also know how long he was riding it for, which is also, if this was 0.5 miles, that means this has to be 0.45 miles, which is also 804.5 meters. First question is, if it takes him a total of eight minutes to get home, so we know the whole thing also takes him a time of eight minutes. And eight minutes times 60, uh, we know is going to be, uh, if we put it just into seconds, is equal to 480 seconds. Okay, so we know the whole thing is a mile, takes eight minutes. This portion is like this. What we want to know is how fast was Jim riding his bicycle in meters per second before he gets his flat tire. So what we're looking for is the speed here. However, we only have the distance. One thing that we can do though is since we, for the red portion, we know the distance and the speed, we can find what the time it takes is while he's walking. So we're going to do Speed is equal to distance over time. Speed is equal to 2.1 meters per second, which is equal to the distance, which is 804.5 meters. Make sure you have all the correct uh, units here. And we don't know what the time is. We do some math. And what we discover is it takes him 383.09 seconds. Uh, so it takes him 800, 383.09 seconds to walk half a mile after the flat tire. Now, 
we know that the whole ride took eight minutes or 480 seconds. So we can find how long he was riding for before the flat. So we can do 480 minus 383.09. And what we can get is it takes 97.2, whoopsies. We can do, whoops. 480 minus 383.09 and we get 96.91 seconds. And now we can find what the speed is. Speed is equal to the distance which is 804.5 meters divided by the time which is 96.91 seconds. And we put that into our calculator and we get 8.3 meters per second. Kind of a lot of stuff, but just take your time. It's like a puzzle, just kind of find what you can find and then you could get everything. Part B says, what was Jim's average speed in meters per second during the, in, during the eight minute trip? So this isn't that hard actually. We know velocity is equal to displacement over time. So we're looking for the average velocity, uh, or sorry, average speed, which in this case is gonna be the same thing. Uh, sorry, da, 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 da. Or speed, which is equal to distance over time. Uh, we know the distance is one mile or uh, 1609 meters. And we know the time is eight minutes or 480 seconds. And we get that the speed is equal to 1609 divided by 480. And we get 3.35 meters per second. But when he gets home, what happens? When he gets home, he shows his mom the trophy and she gives him a nice long hug. All right, this is all for speed and velocity.